What's going on? Hey, Scott. Hi there, buddy. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Andy, que pasa? All right. All right. And hello to everybody out there in attendance. Uh, we appreciate it your attendance today and, and thank you. This is the trading studio. My name is Andy and that's Jamie and Scott. And once again, thank you for taking time out of your day. Uh, let's dive in. Okay, first let's go over some uh, legal issues here. We are a content publisher here at Trade Ideas. Okay, even though we're gonna be looking at some nice setups and talking about stocks and things like that, uh, don't uh, construe it as investment advice. That's not where, what we're trying to do here. So. Uh, if you are seeking investment advice, find somebody who's licensed like a registered advisor or a stock broker. All right, the agenda for today. <clears throat> I like this one. I, I really, I get uh, people sending me emails when I talk about this a lot and, and they like it too. So I, I like to like throw, make this part of my content at least every maybe four to six months. And it's it's been a while. So we're going to talk about it some more uh, after we do the market recap and the Holly recap. And it's, we're going to talk about bottom fishing. And I know there's a lot of uh, uh, traders, a lot of great traders out there that would never do something like this. I happen to be pretty good at it. And I think uh, a lot of people could could do, do the same, you know, uh, some very important uh, disciplines to go over and know what to look for. And, but like I said, these can be uh, very profitable and I'm going to have some examples of trades that I uh, took recently. I needed Jamie to vouch for me. He could because he's actually in in, uh, in one of the funds, a little fun that I trade. So, uh, and then the price alerts game, guys. I sorry, I know it's been a couple of weeks, but uh, I accidentally uh, cleared. I was clearing out my price alerts, and I think I uh, I zapped everybody's price alerts from two weeks ago. But that's okay. And if you if you do have one that did very well, drop it in the window in the questions panel. We'll make sure we say something back to highlight it because I'm sure a couple of you probably had some good ones out there. I apologize for that. All right, let's talk about our five star support, education, and training for the new people in here. Uh, this is a very powerful software, and we do understand that. And it's our job to help you uh, as not only traders but also as uh, people who are very uh, uh, experienced with the software uh, and we got to change up uh, our slide I guess Jamie uh, because we're, they're not every day okay anymore okay we used to do one every day and after about five years of doing these guys I, I'm serious it's, it's kind of hard to come up with content at each and every week so I'm sorry with the new schedule but uh, you know we are gonna have the daily support webinars uh, and then we're gonna be shuffling these uh, so basically the uh, office hours and uh, the Q&A demo will be one week and then the following week it'll be the trade of the week and then the trading studio. But you'll get an email uh, keep you uh, keeping you up to date on all that. Uh, so anyway, great uh, resources to come and watch these webinars. Not only will we talk about the software, we're going to give you some really ideas that maybe help you tr with your trading, especially some of you ones that are, that are new and get, trying to get a grasp of it. Uh, just remember, all the traders here are very experienced. Been do, most of us been doing it for 20 to 25 years. So, <clears throat> uh, and not failed traders either. Okay, very accomplished traders. So, uh, I just want to make sure we get that across. All right, and then, like I was mentioning, the support webinar is every day, Monday through Friday. I'll be doing the one tomorrow at 12 Eastern time, uh, and. Uh, yeah, hit that up. If you're in Barry's room or, you know, in the live stream, we'll just take that over for an hour. Uh, if you're not in there, just be sure to come to trade-ideas.com forward slash live. Best place to come to ask questions about the software because uh, we can demonstrate uh, not only verbally, but visually. So be sure you come in there, guys, if you have any questions. A great place to, to camp out for an hour. All right, I'll save this for Scotty on the way out and let's back out here and let's pull up the uh, spies and talk about the market because we have had four consecutive down days. It's been a while since we have seen that. All you have to do is look here on the chart and uh, even though this was actually a green bar, it was a gap down day. So we have one, 
two, three negative days in a row. We'll see what comes of that. It's like I said, it's been a while. I don't think we'll be able to even see it. Uh, this was not a neg negative day, even though that candle's red, it was actually up on the day. So haven't seen this too much lately. Was it this day right here, maybe? One, two, three, four. But regardless, we haven't seen much, even though it hasn't been much of a dip, just a little bit each day. But we have uh, pulled back. Looks like we could have tomorrow have a date with this uh, uh, red line, which is the 20-period moving average. Might want to keep an eye on that. If we go through that with volume, we may want to test this 50. Now, we could not make it down there, surprisingly, on this day. But boy, that 50 has been strong. Boy, that, that close underneath, I guarantee you, a lot of bears were very, very happy, thought they finally uh, going to get a decent turn in the market. And the next day we have a big gap and go, and that's just, uh, that can be painful if you're short. But you can see here, uh, just continuous uh, bouncing off the 50 moving average. And that's kind of been the uh, uh, the guiding hand, if you will. And the, even when I go back in history, guys, you can see it's been defending it now for several uh several months that's crazy um, i don't i'm not sure i've ever seen that kind of uh stubbornness <laughs> it just it, it just will not break that 50. so uh we'll see we'll see what happens uh i know uh, it's uh tomorrow's a friday uh, uh we'll, we'll see what happens like i said the market has been so resilient uh, you know i'm not going to uh you know definitely stand here and say we we reached the top that's for sure because there's not a whole lot of uh, harm in there. Let's take a look at the cues and see what they look like. And <clears throat> actually a little bit stronger, uh, just hanging on to that uh, 10 period moving average. So the cues are holding up very well. IWM is starting to be IWM again, uh, which means it cannot get out of this funky little range it's been in for some times, just basically in this range. And it continues to be below its 10 period, but you do have the 10, I'm sorry, the 50 and the 20, pretty much right at the same spot. Let's see if that can hold up for the IWM, but that one is really uh, just has not done anything all year. All right, let me uh, ask Jamie, uh, do you have anything that you might add? No, Dr. Andy, I pretty much yeah. concur with your technical Pieces. analysis okay. there. there yes. Yeah, not a whole lot. I mean, it's still just, uh, you know, definitely have not had uh, too much to cheer about to the upside the last four days. But uh, nonetheless, we are still technically very sound as far as the bulls are concerned at this point. That can change quickly, though, but, uh, Jamie. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> I can vouch for that. You should have seen, seen the swing in my blotter today from mm -hmm. top to bottom. It was uh, pretty massive without... Well, I mean, we did have a little bit of downdraft there, but it wasn't huge, but boy, just goes to show you how quickly things can change. They risk, yes, and they mm -hmm. can. Small time frame, right. big time frame. There's a few decent trades in Holly today. Uh, yeah, we did in. have a little bit to look at as far as, you okay. know, conservative good. moderate spread and maybe some good add-on opportunities as well. So if you're right. ready, I'll go sure. ahead and grab it from you. All right. Let me make sure I'm showing the right screen. Okay, you should have eyes on my desktop now. I do. Okay, very good. All right, so here we have the All Trades Blotter from Holly. Had a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, and lucky number seven as far as signals go. And we can see four longs, three shorts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sort by the moderate column here because when we're looking to potentially extract some of this spread here and this is what we like to see let me get my pen over here a bigger number in this column as opposed to this column by the end of the day of course during the market hours we don't know that it's going to end up like this but we can size up the trade and the chart and uh, see if it makes sense to stay in more or less ignore the conservative exit uh, which holly is producing so i tell you what let's take a look at the top one here first we'll take a look at the short the big c um, we can see holly making the entry right here right here where the little uh purple cell order is and i like the way that this is setting up what i've done here is i've marked off the bottom of the candles 
Of course, if you really want to be a stickler, you can mark off the wicks as well. That's really just a personal preference. Um, but as soon as we make that short, get in the money a little bit right about here, then we pop up and almost get that stop out. Just had a little bit of room to go, but it did not get us. And that's that's what a stop is for. Basically took all day, but eventually this thing did break down again. Um, let me just pop an arrow over here since I can't draw very good. Right here is where we finally broke down. So regarding the spread here, we can see why did Holly get out of the trade? Reduce risk. All this action right here, got it a little bit nervous. Finally gives up the ghost way over here, which we can see from the shaded area. Um, but once once this attempt at the stop had been made and we get back down into this level here, well, to me, I would just stick to the, to the hard stop. Of course, everybody's a little bit different. Um, but as we gravitated back down towards the close, this would have been an excellent opportunity to tack on a few shares. Usually they don't take this long, but sometimes they do. So what's this level here? 54.23. And down here, we're down at 53.15. So another point on the table uh, with an add-on right here, ignoring that reduced risk exit right about this area right here. Big difference between losing 20 bucks and making 100. We could call that a 6x difference between negative 20 uh, and 100 there. So not a bad short. Um, kind of would have thought today that we'd see a lot more short plays, but the, the strategies that Holly drums up are very specific and just didn't get a whole lot of signals today. And I'd rather have less than more typically from the AI. So a pretty decent trade, some pretty decent spread on the big C trade and a nice little ad opportunity uh, coming in towards the close. Not too shabby on the love sack. The, what is it? I can't remember how much these couches cost, but they're like, Wow, they're really expensive, but obviously the market loves them. So, got a nice little buy signal coming in, not too long after the open, right about here in this candle. We can see the blue buy line at 57.34. Um, this one, as soon as that candle is generated right there, my eyes are, are looking at this prior high, waiting for that add-on opportunity, which we get right here in this candle here. All right. Um, so once again, a profit save. Holly didn't spend much time in this one. We get a little uptrend. We get that little pullback and that's more than likely right here where she got spooked out. But hey, we're not even back to break even. We're miles away from the stop right here. Um, so, you know, can't say anything's easy when making a decision in the market, but this trade was what trade was well behaved. It was always in the money. Of course, I'm looking at the five period and, you know, from what I've noticed, a lot of the times that 10 period comes into play on the five as well, um, kind of ruling the roost here as far as the rest of the up move goes. Could have added on right here, set a little bit of a pullback before, you know, the end of the day, it was just a grind higher uh, all day. So not a bad trade to be in. Uh, never came close to stopping us out with a nice ad opportunity here. And even we could even put another line right here. You know, sometimes these things repeat themselves. So probably a good time to throw on some more shares as we crossed this level here as well. And that's where the most of the move came from for the rest of the day. So not quite as good of a multiple uh, here, but we could call that about a little over nine times uh, in moderate mode versus what Holly plucked out in conservative mode. And the nice, not one, but two nice ad opportunities uh, presenting itself, presenting themselves, I should say, as well. Now on this one, we did have a little bit, a tiny bit of spread here. 74, 91 pales in comparison to what we saw in these two. But let's take a look. Any good ad, ad opportunities on ENVB? Not really. You can see Holly caught it right about the time that it broke out from that 5, 10, 15, 20 minute opening range break. This one was a little bit tougher to stay in. We go all the way up, we come all the way back down. Um, Holly making a pretty timely exit up in this area up here on the conservative mode with the profit save. And had we stayed in it all day, you can see, we'd be right about the same place that she got out. 
making about 20 more bucks, all based around $100 risk. So a little bit different than the other two, not really any good ad opportunities, but a profitable trade nonetheless, but definitely the smallest spread uh, between conservative and moderate there. Curve, okay. Also, not quite a 4X between conservative and moderate. Once again, profit save, profit save. We only had one stop out today. Um, but presenting a nice ad opportunity on the curve as well. I love it when they follow through this quickly. Five, 10, 10 minutes later, after Holly gives us the signal right here at 23.15, boom, we got that opening range break, uh, getting cracked right here. Of course, it throws a little bit of wiggles, but uh, higher before the day's out. If we would have added some shares on there at 24.05, you know, you had all the way up to 25.10. So you had about another point of opportunity there with a nice add-on. Uh, I had to sit a little bit of a wiggle, but uh, notice never really even came and kissed that entry level. So a decent spread, once again, on curve and a nice opportunity to leverage that position. So all in all, didn't knock it out of the park today, Andy, but some nice opportunity from Holly, especially if you decided to leverage some of those positions on the add-on setups. Well, yeah, I mean, anytime you have uh, a day like we had in the spies today, I mean, that, yeah, that's that's not bad at all. Yeah. And the fact that these three were all long as well, you know, right. and held up pretty pretty solid, mm -hmm. um, you know. For sure. I'll take it. All right, man. All right, my friend, I will kick all it right. back over Get to back. you. Hot potato, there you go. All right, got it. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, let's take a look. All right, so uh, probably my favorite when it comes to bottom fishing is this one called, and, and many of you guys have heard me talk about this over and over. This is one that I actually, uh, I'm going to do that for us uh, in real time so you guys can see what I did to that one. In case you're not getting a, a lot of symbols in here, I'm going to show you how you can kind of configure it to to get more symbols. Uh, all right, so revenue growth fishing. Okay, let's take a look uh, for some of the newer people that may have not seen me talk about this before. Uh, what I'm looking for is just a top list, so there's no alert. Okay, and basically I'm just looking for stocks over five dollars. The quarterly revenue growth has to be at least 20%. So that's Pretty decent, you know. So anything above that's going to be, uh, you know, good as far as uh, quarterly revenue growth is concerned. Position in three-month range, I'm looking for a max of 30. Okay, so basically it means to, needs to be in the lower portion of its three-month range. Okay, so it's had a sell-off over the last three months, but the position in 10-day range needs to be a minimum of 70. So it's getting in the upper portion of, of its 10-day range which could be a signal that, hey, this thing may be basing and starting to look, uh, in other words, buyers have stepped in over the last 10 days and they're starting to push these things to the upper end of its 10-day range. So maybe uh, there's an accumulation going on, maybe it's about to change direction. So to me, this is, uh, like I said, one of my favorites. I, I love the fact that, uh, uh, you know, it do, they do have revenue growth and a lot of times you can get some really nice pops out of this. Now I'm going to give you an example of three stocks, no four stocks that I've recently played. Uh, three of them were in, uh, no two of them were in in this uh, uh, revenue growth fishing top list, and the other two, uh, I'm trying to remember. I know I got one from Michael and the other one. I'll talk about them as I go along anyway. Okay, let's talk about the first one, which let's talk about the two that I know I got from the Revenue Growth Fishing. And this one I actually tweeted on Sunday night, this CLOV. Look at that beautiful long base it had for like, uh, geez, almost uh, at least two months there. So, and then we had a very nice move right there off of this uh uh, day right here where you just kind of had a spinning top day uh, but it was above all three of its moving averages you had the 10 crossing the 50 it already crossed the 20 a while back uh, 50 is still declining but still it was above it popped above this 50 and just basically took off on good volume I bought this one pretty quick that day uh, I can't remember the exact price I want to say maybe around 940 or something like that and had a banner day now 
I'm also, I'm not just going to talk about uh, how I jumped in and had some great trades. Okay. I'm going to also tell you where I messed up. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of trades that I tried and did not work and what I did. I think that's how you learn. I mean, anybody can sit there and pound their chest and say, oh, I did this. Oh, look, look how great I am. I'm not that way because uh, we all make mistakes. And even if somebody <laughs> has been trading as long as I, I still make mistakes. Uh, so uh, the important thing is to learn from those mistakes. Uh, on this day, I took uh, all of it off, okay? Uh, I did not like the area. It's probably no excuse because it was coming up against, almost basically reached my target. And at the close, I took it off right before the close. Well, turned out being pretty decent uh, because the next day it gapped down and basically came all, would have come all, way, all the way back to my entry price. That kind of stuff happens. That's why when I'm looking for these setups, I know the potential to be explosive is huge. And typically what I'll do is sell maybe 75%. I usually accumulate a pretty decent size for me. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll sell 75% of my trade. And then I'll usually hang on to 25% and let it work for me. Okay. And I'm going to show you the second example of a trade that I got through RAAS. And this is one I've traded differently where I did exactly what I just told you I, I, I normally do. On this one right here, I was actually pretty much got my full size on this day right here. Uh, no, I take that back. Uh, I added, I added on this gap and go day. Okay. So uh, had probably half size added here. And then these are actually Holly signals, I believe, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, which by the way, yeah, th this is this is great uh instructions. Okay, I ended it on this day right here two weeks ago. I think you probably mentioned me talking to you about it and saying, Keep an eye on this one. Holly called this, and a lot of the China stocks were moving. I was on it that day. Look what happened, it did not work. Okay, so what I had to do was basically cut it the following day. Okay, that's okay. I don't mind taking losses. It's not the losses, okay? Anybody can take a loss and, and it not affect them, okay? It's when you don't get out of that loss and let it keep running against you, okay? That's when you get in trouble. And I have no problem getting out of something and turning around and trying it again, okay? I loved that China was bouncing. This thing had been basically destroyed over the last uh, eight uh, months or whatever that is, six months. And I felt like, you know, look at there, decent, great cash position versus debt, nice revenue growth, not quite making money yet. It doesn't look like, but that's okay. I mean, look how far Amazon went before it made money. Uh, so that doesn't bother me as much as I, I, I really like a good cash to debt ratio and then the quarterly growth. All right. So I, buy, I bought it back and got a huge move on this day. Did I can't remember my exact sales. I probably sold half uh, at the gap fill and sold another 25% pretty close to the top. And then I kept, I stayed in 25% uh, of this position. Okay. And I still in 25% of this position. And look, it's potentially setting up again. Okay. And then what I'll do, I, you see, I have an alert right there. I'll probably drag this down a little bit. And then what will happen is if this thing turns and goes again, I will probably add to that position. I don't know if I'll get a full position like I had back over here, but I would definitely add to that position if everything feels right. I'll look at market and things like that. So look at these moves, guys. I mean, this is basically almost a 50 50% 50 move from, you know, this entry here to the top of this bar so you can get some huge moves and a lot of them you're talking 50 to 100 percent easy okay so when you think about those kind of uh performances it's okay to take a few nicks and, and scratches along the way before they go uh the thing about it is when they do go you you want to be in them because nothing can be more frustrating to be in something that doesn't work and then you wake up one day and this thing's ripping you're like ah oh, so don't if you have to try a couple of times, it's okay. The key is you got to be disciplined when they don't work and they break below moving averages. Okay. Just set your alert and then, hey, visit it again and uh, kind of uh, recalculate, you know, uh, what's going on. 
All right. Another one is this one is was Michaels, and I got to give him the credit for it. This is one that IPO'd and look at the consecutive sell-off days. I think I tweeted this one too as well on this day and said, uh, you know, look for a potential bar reversal because it could get going. Surprised it didn't get going more on this day. Uh, I actually took an entry, uh, probably a half size on this day right here because it looked like it was defending kind of that four range. And, and then I added to it on this day and I had to sit through a little bit of, uh, you know, not doing anything. Okay. I didn't get frustrated because it was still holding up. Wasn't coming back anywhere near four. You know, I had a decent price and then I got a pop, you know, on this day right here, you know, all the way to 574. Same thing. I've saved, sold 75% of my position on these uh, moves higher. I kept 25%. I could, this one really frustrated me because I got out of all of it on this day, my last uh, position on this day right here when it broke down below that and closed and closed below that 10 period moving average on decent volume. Okay. When you see things like that, me personally, I, I, I you know, I don't want to risk it. Okay. I'm not looking for these things to break down, you know, below their, you know, 10 period moving average. Um, so I, I got out of that one and I saw it on this day right here and I, did not enter back into this one. I cannot remember the reason why. I think it when I, when I saw it, it just got away from me too quick and I was frustrated. Uh, sometimes it can be hard when you get out, you know, I think of my last around, you know, 440 and then you see it coming through <laughs> back above five again. Sometimes it's too hard to chase. But uh, if you would have, that would have been a nice one. All right, one more to go through them. And this one was kind of a little bit of a different story. OK, this is one that was just on my radar. I follow a lot of China stocks and it was this day right here that. I entered this trade and um, even the, even a couple of traders, I always we always tell each other what we're doing in our slack. And uh, they kind of laughed at me on this day when I bought this. Uh, but and I think my average price was right around four. But look at this. Look at this chart. I'm going to show you something. All right, so we basically come from the 30s all the way down here to the $4 range. And this right here, when I see this kind of action with a stock basis a lot of times, okay, and then you see that move down, it can, it's like a shakeout of these people, all these people who thought they bought right here. You see this quite a bit. I'll show you another chart very similar to this. When you see this a lot of times, it can be a shakeout, okay? So I just played the bar reversal on this day right here. And I did very well, but I'm going to be honest with you. This is one I told when I say I messed up, I messed up. First, let me, let me tell you what I did like about this. Look at this cash position, one almost $2 billion. Okay, look at this. Uh, not a lot of revenue growth, but look at the debt position versus the cash. Uh, you know, and, and it's making money. It's a, a vape company, a China vape company. And I think I got out of my rest, the rest on this day right here when it took out that bar. And I can kick myself for not hanging on because look at the what I left on the table. Just uh, really frustrating. That's me just making a mistake, guys. That should, there's no reason for me not to be in some of this steel. And but that's what happens a lot of times when, when you're a, an active trader. Uh, sometimes you just don't do what you want to do. Uh, and it comes a lot from being a day trader for so many years. Okay, you're on, you're on those small time frames, and it's hard to condition yourself to to be a swing trader to the full extent. And the best way to do it is what I'm doing, and I still get out a lot of times. Yeah, there's no excuse for me not to still be in a quarter of my position. All right, a couple that didn't work now from the same revenue growth fishing. And that is a HT. <clears throat> uh, now, one this one I'm a little bit skeptical about getting back to that cash debt ratio. Look, you know, cash is okay, but look at this current debt. Uh, it, that's pretty hefty. It won't keep me out of a trade as long as everything's setting up and the volume's there and there's a nice technical breakout, but not something I really like to see. You can say they're not earning money. Uh, the revenue growth is just fine. That's fine there, but uh, I usually like to see a little bit better, but 
like I said, first I'm a technician. I'm I'm looking, you know, technically this has been basting for a very long time. And I tried it on this day right here, yesterday. A lot of times I like to be a little early. I see some action. I looked like volume was coming in in the morning. There was some volume there. Looked like it was going to take out this range and I pulled the trigger a little early. That's okay. It was probably half a position. Well, I know it was half a position. Uh, but look at that, did not work. Now I did get out on the same day on this one right here. I just not, that's not what I want to see. Okay, take out a basically a five day low. This is one I got out. But as you can see, I have it marked up again and I would be willing to try. As a matter of fact, I kind of want to make sure if it's really moving, I like to see these things early. Um, so that's just one that did not work. That's okay. I'm okay with that because I know if it if I hit it and the volume comes in, that's the key. I'm always looking for volume, like you saw in this R A A S. Look at that move there and huge volume as it brown and broke out of this kind of congestion. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, Another one that wasn't really on uh, the revenue growth fishing at the time. It may have been on there at one time because I see it's close to my 20%, but it was this LAZR. And this is one that one of the guys had given to me. I liked the way it had moved up and was going sideways. 10 across the 20 moving average looked like it wanted to go. And very similar to AHT, I did the same thing. I bought it. I bought it too early. I, you know, I was trying to anticipate. And of course, on this day right here, I got out because it broke down. It's okay. Once again, I don't mind these little hen scratches. I mean, I, I can uh, I can take these as long as I have those moves like RLX, the ones I showed you, that Hippo, RA, all, all four of them. You know, I made so much more money on those than I lost on these ones where they're failing and I'm getting out quick. It's no fun. Nobody likes to do that. but I'm telling you, when you start hitting stocks for 50 or 100 <laughs> percent, you can make up for a whole bunch of these hen scratches. So, uh, uh, so with that being said, I'm, I wanted to see. Oh yeah, I wanted to go through and look, and maybe find some that may be setting up, or the ones I'm watching, and and we can go through it together and uh, take a look and some see if we can't find something that may be setting up for some of these moves again. And once again, guys, there's a lot of people that would never even think about trading this way. And if it's not your style, don't worry. I understand there's a lot of people like to buy highs, sell higher. I'm Right now, I'm, the highs is not working for me at all, okay? Uh, a lot of my strategies, these are the ones where, that are working for me right now, so I'm going to stick with them. All right. So if you are not getting a lot of data in these things, so like, Two days ago, this thing was full. Yesterday morning, it was pretty full. And now what, we've got seven stocks in there. You say, well, gosh, why is that the case? Well, we've had a little bit of pullback in the market. So a lot of these have fallen out of their 10 day range filter. Okay, so they're not in that upper 30% of their 10 day range. So we can fix that just to get a look at things that were there and may have fallen back. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this. I like to duplicate them just in case I accidentally save my screen. I don't like messing up the one I'm working with. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to configure. And I'm just going to drop this 10 day range to 50. Okay. And you know what I mean? I meant to change this. This is kind of high for three month average. I think I'm just going to do a, uh, uh, volume today. Volume today shares. We're going to add filter and we're going to do 200,000. All right, let's see if we get some more in here. Yeah, we got a lot more. So we're going to pull this right here and we're going to take a look at some of these. And I'll take a look at a lot of them and, and show you and tell you what I don't like and what I do like. A lot of times, what I'm looking for is a basing pat pattern, like that clove. That was a beautiful basing pattern. Okay. Uh, been basing for basically two months. Like this as hat. <laughs> uh, you know, basing. 
Okay, so let's just go through a couple of them and see what we're looking for here. Now, see, so this scares me. Anytime I see a big gap down, okay, in most cases, when you get a big gap down, not always, in most cases, this takes longer to work out. I don't know if it was earnings, August 10th. It uh, looks like, yeah, that was earnings. So when you get a big gap down on earnings, sometimes it takes a couple of months to two or three months to work out of. So I don't trust things like this. I don't like those big gap downs. Bongo doesn't look bad, you know, for basically it's been for a couple of months almost. It's been uh, kind of basing. There, there, there you go. Remember how I said a lot of times you'll get that shake out and then that bounce? You'll see that a lot, guys. Keep an eye on that when you do see those and look for a bar reversal. A lot of times those can just be a shakeout over the last month. It's just, it just I'm not going to use the term they will shake you out because I don't know who they are. It's just emotions chasing, chasing, chasing people out. But not bad. I'm not going to mark these up and do price alerts, guys. So you might want to just jot them down uh, or uh, you know just follow along with me. I'll go ahead and mark this up. If it gets back above the six dollars and back above that fifty, you can just follow along with me. This one's not bad, but once again, there you go. You got that. You got that drive down. I'm not sure if that was earnings. No, they're saying November 8th. I'm not sure what that was, but anytime I see action like this, once again, I'm gonna let it work out. JetBlue, uh, JetBlue, both JetBlue and Save have been. S A V E has been in here. I really like the way Save was working, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that one. That was kind of a failed attempt there, so maybe it needs to go sideways. Okay, Yala, I like this. Okay, uh, an ugly day here, but it wasn't big gap down on news, uh, so I'm not sure what that day was. And okay, that was earnings, but it wasn't a huge gap down. I'll put them, I got an alert set in there, but gosh, I still don't like that earnings day right there. So I'm going to have to see like big volume to take a chance on something like that. I almost almost have to be some news driving it because, uh, like I said, typically they take a while after earnings. Uh, Andy, uh, if you have sure. time. Real, um, sure, absolutely. You go ahead and get through that window and then then we'll look at Baba. Hmm. OK, uh, I'm not going to go through all. I jotted a couple down, ones that I like. IMAX. And I had an alert. Now, this one I didn't buy. OK, but this is one where you might want to keep an eye on, especially if some of if, if this AMC gets, uh, gets going again. Uh, and CNK is another one that's been holding up very well. You know, after a move, you might want to keep an eye on this IMAX could be explosive. You have your revenue growth there. Cash to current debt's OK. So I set one there right above 16. Big pivot level at 16. So could get a nice little pop from that one. Uh, I mentioned Yala, and I'll look at a few more, and then we'll. Uh, I don't, I don't trust these oil plays. That, that I mean that looks decent above eight, but I, I just, you're, you're, you're strapped to the commodity on those things. Anyway, I'll let you guys. Uh, this one doesn't look bad. Look at that revenue growth, eleven thousand. Uh, well, as I zoom out, that's kind of messy. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that. Say, this is the one I was saying that uh, looked pretty good, but look at the day you got today. Now, I didn't buy it today. Uh, I just uh, did not want to buy a whole lot today. Currently, I'm in that uh, Diana Shipping, which you might want to keep an eye on. Guys, this, uh, this is like a multi-year high if it takes out this high over here. Okay, so keep an eye on the, this is the trade of the week, so keep an eye on that. I am in that one. I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's right. I'm back in. Uh, I'm still in RAS and actually bought some more today around this level. So I'm adding to my position in RAAS. Uh, not like the size I had over here, but I may add some more if it goes in there. All right, Jamie Baba. Yeah, Nasio was just asking about what would you think about Baba? You know what? I've been I, I I liked Baba on this day right here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had a, an alert set on that at 150 uh, to buy. 
if it got down there, it got about $2 from me. I love the way that put in that nice little, you know, hammer uh, and then gapped up here. Look how gappy it is. The problem with something like Baba is you are going to have to basically play the overnight China markets because just like, you know, today, it gapped down today, you know, all the Asian markets were down overnight and that's just something you have to live with, you know, and, and, and I don't like these gappy. It's, it's too hard for me to get a good picture of what it's doing technically when, when you have all these gaps. Um, it's below its moving averages now, so I would not be inclined to do anything right here. Uh, it's, it's just to get, it's guesswork. Uh, you know, I would, you know, love to see it, you know, back above this level. Gets back above that level, then you may have a quick move to the 50 moving average, which would be probably 10 points. So, uh, but right now, yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not crazy about it. All right, KJ says, all right, we can we can look at some charts and we can do that. Uh, yeah, they uh, lithium, lithium was going earlier today. I've noticed, you know, Tesla's kind of taken the charge. Uh, wasn't too long ago when Tesla would get running, you'd have Neo and then you have all these small ones get running. Boy, lately we're not seeing the, the small ones run. Uh, now, lithium looked like it was going to go again, but it pulled back today. A lot of stuff pulled back with the market, which is, uh, you know, not surprising. All right. Uh, so let's do the uh, let's do the price alert game. OK. And uh, once again, sorry, guys, about what happened uh, last uh, the, me er accidentally erasing all of them. Sorry about that. But we can fire away some more. And. Now remember, we're going to be back every two weeks. So these look for some long-term setup. Price alerts, there they are. All right. So here's how you. Here's what you guys are going to do. All right. You're going to give me KJ. Is that LAC? Is that your uh, price alert that you're giving me? Ah, okay. Yeah, he's he was ready. All right, so see how KJ did it? Well, I guess you don't see. But anyway, just give me a stock and give me a price. I will assume it's a long unless you tell me otherwise. If it's a short, just be sure to tell me it's a short. He wants it at 2160. All righty. And don't everybody give me it at once. And that is KJ at 2160 long. And there you go. So need some more participants. Uh, yeah, we kind of kind of have lower attendance, Jamie, uh, a little bit today. So uh, maybe some of the usuals aren't around for some reason. Uh, but here we go. We got EMA. I, I count on EMA ZS. Huh? ZS. Scalar at. Ooh, that's a pretty nice setup there. Okay, long at 288.52. All right, and that is EMA. Kara from Stephanie. Kara at 18 long. All right, going up here at 18 for a major break out there. Kara. And let's see, AMC long at 49. All right. Oh, I didn't. Oh, shoot. Let me put the. Hold on just a minute here. I got to do some columns here so I can find out.
Okay, AMC. Let me edit this one. And that was uh, Walt. All right, mRNA. I'm gonna go with Moderna. I think it was looking pretty today. I know that that set up. And Moderna at 454, looking for a little bit of a pullback. And that is a long, correct? All right. Long, and that's from Neo. C I F R. Oh, playing playing a new issue there. Uh, okay, I like that. Uh, Thirteen nineteen. Uh, all right, it's not trading there, so we can do that. And that is a long, and that is for Aja. Okay, just make sure I got that in there right. Cliff at 2415. Okay, Cliff at 2415. That's Stan G. Bob, nugget again. You know what, Bob? I traded that nugget. And made some decent money on it on on half of it, and then it ended up getting out to the, my other half for a flat. Uh, on this day right here, I bought it and sold it at the half of it at the fifty. I wish I'd have sold it all. Uh, all right, nugget. That's Bob at fifty. All right, looking for his little pullback again. Then okay. And that is Bob T, just in case we have another Bob. I don't think we are. All right, looks like, uh, yeah, we got it. We got an okay amount going once, guys. If anybody wants to play, give me a stock and a price, and we'll get you in. And this is going to be a two-week game now, so plan these moves for, you know, when we pull them up. We'll take a look at uh, what what could have been if we, had we been here, you know, the week, week prior, but. Uh, uh, this will be fine since they're uh, two week long ones. All right, looks like that's all. So I'm going to save these and share them with you guys. Copy. I'm going to drop them into the chat panel. So anybody who wants to grab them will be able to grab them. Price alerts. And there you go. All right, guys. Well, that's uh, that's all I have for today. I hope uh, I hope you guys uh, maybe learn something from uh, bottom fishing. Like I said, it's not for everybody. If you, if, but uh, for some of you who don't mind, it can be, like I said, a very very prop, profitable venture. Uh, you're welcome, <clears throat> Debbie. All right, thanks everybody. I'm going to bring in Scott. He'll walk us out. You guys hang on. He'll have a discount code for you. Yeah, thank you. A um, couple things on the way out. Uh, grab the new Strategy Indicators ebook before we switch over to promoting another one. It's really helpful. It's really good. Um, it's got uh, some advice from our Director of Software Development, Dave May. Just go to trade-ideas.com slash strategy. You can also grab cloud links from there and import them into your layouts to use his indicators and strategies. We also have a new product, the Strength Alerts newsletter. Um, if you like the trade of the week, give that a try. It's $17 a month, and you get five ideas every Sunday night to review on Monday morning. Uh, Trade-ideas.com slash strength to learn more about it. And uh, that's a great that's a great uh, way to go if you're not quite ready to get a full trade idea subscription, but you do like the trade of the week and our webinars. Um, and if you have any questions, email info at tradeideas.com. That's info at trade-ideas.com. It goes to our support desk, gets you the help you need. And uh, you can find Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot. You can find our Steve Gomez at TISteveG. Also find us at Trade Ideas. 
and uh, facebook.com slash trade ideas pro is the Facebook page to like and favorite. Uh, thanks everyone. The recording will be up later on and you get an email reminder tomorrow about how to find it. Have a nice one. And uh, Andy and Jamie, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thanks everybody. I'll see some of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.